Uh, I wanted to give you an idea of how this uh, uh, nut comes off just because it was so difficult. Um, you want to get a clutch basket tool and uh, lock it onto your clutch basket. I got this one from Motion Pro. Another trick, as I'm told, is uh, that you can get, if you have an old clutch pack, you can drill some holes through it and um, bolt the plates together and stick them back in here. And it'll lock the inner and the outer baskets and makes the nut getting off easier. I use the tool and you, um, you got to have one of those. You're not going to get it off without a uh, impact driver so it's off just got to figure out how to get this out all right uh, I'll tell you what I had to do to get this thing off finally um, I was gonna get a gear puller but I didn't need to what I bought was this little uh, mini torch and uh, using heat from the torch I went around this area of the clutch driver a lot <laughs> took a long time um, and I managed ow it's still hot managed to uh, get that off so now I'm pulling off the main uh, clutch basket oh behind that forgot to tell you there was a big washer like so uh, I did not have an o-ring there as stated on the microfiche so maybe it's missing was never installed I don't know but there goes the clutch uh, basket um, the bearings needle bearings you're gonna slide out of there on you. Uh, keep in mind, you just don't want to lose that. It's important, obviously. And this actually fell on the. This one actually fell on the ground, so um, I'll have to do a little cleaning on this one. But got the upper oil pump gear and the lower oil pump gear. Uh, the clutch basket's now removed. So we just need to uh, take a look at these gears, uh, make sure they're, uh, everything's working okay with the oil pumps, and I'll take it from there. So I'm going to do that now. I know I said earlier I didn't have an oil ring or an O-ring on this uh, shaft here, but a closer inspection, I actually found one. Um, it's supposed to be a 17 by 1.5. And I measured this one, and it looks looks to be about uh, almost close to two centimeters in diameter, so that would put it about 17 millimeters. So that's my guess that I do have the the O-ring on here, and that everything's okay. So I'm not missing anything like I thought earlier. Um, what you're looking at is the uh, left-hand side of the motor with all the clutch removed, the plates, and the baskets. Uh, clutch driver um, and now you see some gears your main shaft uh, this top gear is the gear that lubricates all the bearings and components of the motor and the bottom gear the black of the black nylon gears is the um, return I, I originally thought I had a problem with the return. Um, I don't know if you can hear that. It's a very faint noise, especially over my two-year-old screaming in the in the house. But um, the way I found that I could check this is that if you look under where our uh, return line fitting goes right there my finger sticking in there and you actually turn that gear you can feel the suction and the pressure depending on which way you turn that gear 
to verify that it's working. And I can kind of hear it kind of suck the drops of oil that are left, so. Oh, I have to hold the camera. I need a cameraman, but um, if I put my finger over it and turn the gear, I can feel it pushing against my finger when I turn it the correct way. That's how I know that return pump is, is pumping. So I don't really feel I need to get snap, snap ring pliers and remove the snap ring and then actually break into the oil pump. There's three screws, there's the edge of one there, one, two, three in a triangle kind of configuration and behind this gear and then there's a uh, this one's working because when I turn it the correct direction like so and swing around to the other side of the uh, F650 that uh, <laughs> I got tons of oil dripping out of the thing um, and that oil was coming out of the center hole here in the oil filter housing. As you can see, I kind of mangled up this uh, return fitting, or uh, what is that called? Check valve or oil return valve or something like that. That uh, is almost next to impossible to get out without damaging it. Uh, this other side with the hole in it, the bottom one, the inner one, uh, I managed to get that one out just fine without any damage. And I checked the little rubber stopper valve and spring and it looked fine. This one can't confirm it. Um, rather than causing any more damage or stripped head, I'm just going to leave it alone. Pumps seem to be working. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is is uh, put the clutch assembly back on the bike in the order that it's described in the microfiche. So the first thing that goes on is the smaller of the two uh, needle bearing. And the larger. And I've already cleaned them and make sure they were nice and clean, no grit. Um, now I'm going to put the clutch basket on and it's not just going to slide on. Um, you're going to have to sync up all of the different gears and how I do that is with this little this little pick. Um, it's a very handy tool basically just uh, like a little mini screwdriver except it comes to a point you can get it in tight spaces and get up under o-rings and do all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. Alright, got it synced up with this gear. Basically you'll know when you got it lined up because that basket will just pop right into place. It won't move. You check your gear. It's not turning. This one down here is not turning. You can tell it's trying to turn the whole basket so you know everything's meshed, meshed up nice and neat. Okay, 